Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, we're going to check out the EZA command. Now, this isn't something that's going to normally come with your Linux distribution. It's something that you have to install, but it is something that you might want to consider installing because it's really cool. Now, EZA is similar to the ls command. In fact, it serves the exact same purpose. Its purpose is to list the files in your current working directory. But it has additional features that the ls command itself doesn't have, including colorization support and other options that you're going to see in this video. So without any further hesitation, let's check out the EZA command. First of all, what exactly is EZA? Well, I mentioned already that it's a modern replacement for ls, which I think is a pretty accurate description. I'm sure many of you that are watching this are already pretty familiar with the ls command, but if you're not, I have a dedicated video that covers it. I'll leave a card for that video right about here if you want to learn more about the ls command. Anyway, EZA serves the same purpose as the ls command, as it gives you the ability to list files within a directory. The difference, though, is that EZA is able to do more, and it gives you additional options that aren't present in the ls command itself. For example, here's the output of ls-lh, and here is the same thing in EZA. And you can see the difference pretty much immediately. The colorized output is much more prominent, but not only that, we see a nice header above the results which makes the output look more modern. But the EZA command isn't just about colorization or including a header. I will be showing you some of its specific options later in this video, and some of those are going to illustrate just how it stands apart from the ls command. Let's take a look at how to install EZA. And the first step is to check the official repository site for distribution compatibility. As you can see, there's a handy table within the repository that details which distribution feature EZA in their repositories. And if your distribution just so happens to have this package available, then all you have to do is install it. Now also keep in mind that this particular table right here might change depending on when you're watching this video. So what I recommend you do is consult the official repository site for the updated table. That way, if they add additional capabilities, you'll have the latest version. I'll leave a card on the screen right now that'll take you directly to this page. All you have to do is scroll down, find this table, and check to see if your distribution is supported. And if your distribution is on that list and it shows that the package is available within the default repositories, then all you have to do is install it. In my case, I'm currently running Debian 13. So what we'll do is run sudo, then apt install, and then what we'll do is install the EZA package just like that. So I'll press enter, and then I'll press enter again to accept the default of Y. Notice that Y is capital, so by simply pressing enter without answering at all, it's going to assume the default, which in this case happens to be Y, so I'll simply press enter. And now that we've installed it, the command should be available. To confirm that, I'll run command-v and then EZA, just like that. And as you can see, it is available. Now in my case, as you know, I'm running Debian, so the process was pretty simple. I just used apt to install the EZA package, and now it's installed on my system. But if you're using a different distribution, and if the package is available for that distribution's repositories, then all you have to do is use your distribution's package manager to install the EZA package. And now that I have it installed, all I have to do is type EZA just like that, and as you can see, it works. Anyway, now that we've covered how to install EZA, let's see it in action. And if you're already familiar with the ls command, then EZA is very, very easy to get started with. In fact, some of the options that you use with the ls command will also work with EZA. It's not necessarily a drop-in replacement for the ls command because there are some differences, but for the most part, the basics should work the same way. Now the simplest example of the EZA command is to simply type it just like this with no options or arguments. And as you can see, it's giving you a file listing of your current working directory. And so far, that's not much different from the ls command, is it? In fact, if I run the ls command by itself, the output looks exactly the same. However, as I add options and show you some of the functionalities of the EZA command, you're going to see more examples of how it differs. In fact, 
Let's add the dash L option just like this. If I press enter, as you can see, it gives me a long listing. Now notice the colorization. There's quite a bit of colorization here. Now if I compare that output to the equivalent ls command, ls-l, you'll see that I get the same information, but there's a lot more colorization with EZA than there is with ls, at least by default. However, when we continue to explore EZA, you'll see more examples of how it differs. Now similar to the ls-l command, which is this one right here, if you add the dash h option to the ls command, then that's going to show you human readable file sizes. That's probably something that most of you already knew, but the thing is, you could also do that with EZA as well. So I'll run EZA-LH just like that, and you'll see that the output is a bit different, isn't it? Not only do we have a long listing, but we also have a header right here. Now notice when I ran EZA-L just like this, there wasn't a header at the top, but when you use the dash H option, which is normally used for human readable output, that also shows a header on top of the listing, which can be very useful, especially if you're just starting out. But like I mentioned during the intro, the EZA command is dubbed to be the modern replacement for LS, and I think at this point you're starting to see why it's claimed to be that. So far, it's not that it's giving you anything that the LS command doesn't, but it is showing it in a much more modern way. Continuing, let's look at some additional options with the EZA command. Now, I'm not going to go over all of the options. There's quite a few that you could use with this command, but I am going to show you some of the highlights. Now, keep in mind that some of the options that I'm going to be giving you with the EZA command are also going to be present in the LS command as well, but some of them won't be. Some of these are specific to EZA. Now, at this point, I'm going to show you another example of the EZA command. I'm going to use dash L to view a long listing, just like last time. But I'm also going to add the dash dash sort option, as you see right here, and I'm going to set that equal to size. So I'll press enter, and you'll see that the files are not being shown in alphabetical order, but they are being shown by size. Now, of course, you see that all of the files here are either empty or just very small, so it's not a very exciting example. So what I'm going to do right now is give the as a command a directory as an argument. I'm going to point it towards the Etsy directory. Now in this case, note that the files are being sorted by size. The last file here is going to be around 78 kilobytes. And that's because the dash dash sort option with the command that I entered, which is this one right here, is being set to size. It's going to sort by size. So if you wanted to sort files by size, well, that's exactly how you do that. Sorry to interrupt myself, but I just wanted to let you know that I really enjoy making this content for you guys. I have a ton of fun. If you enjoy the content that I produce, then please consider supporting Learn Linux TV. The thing is, producing content like this isn't cheap. So by giving back to the channel, you can help me make even more content for you guys. And to find out more about how you can support Learn Linux TV, what you could do is go to support.learnlinux.tv and there you'll find some of the ways that you can help support the channel. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Now let's see another example. Just like before, I'm going to type EZA and then dash L because I want to view a long listing. But what I'm going to do is add a brand new option, dash dash group, then directories first, just like that. I want to group directories first. And to make this example more entertaining because the Etsy directory is larger than my current working directory, I'm going to pick on that directory again, and I'll press enter. Now in this case, you should see the difference right away. Here we have only files for the most part, there's some sim links as well, but there are some folders and files. But what this is going to do is show all the directories on the top of the list. So if you wanted to see directories first within the output, well, now you know how to do that. Now here's another example that I think is pretty fun. What we're going to do is type EZA, and we're going to give it the dash dash tree option just like this. Now I'm going to omit a path right now just to give you a general idea of what this command does to keep it simple. When I enter that particular command, when I use the dash dash tree option, we see a tree view. And this is very similar to the tree command in Linux. So for example, I could type tree just like this if I happen to have tree installed, and I do. So I do see pretty similar information here, a directory tree. But as you can see, it looks a little bit better when done through EZA. I think that's pretty cool. We see colorized directories right here. We see gray lines instead of white. I think that looks a lot more cleaner. In fact, I prefer that. I think that's awesome. Continuing, 
I'll give you some additional examples with the as a command. I'm sure some of these will help you guys out. But if nothing else, it'll show you some of the additional functionality of EZA when compared to the ls command. I'm going to use the option dash dash only dash files. That's the next one I want to show you guys. And again, I'm going to point it to the Etsy directory. Now I think given the option that I'm using right here, the only files option makes it incredibly clear what's going to happen. And sure enough, we see only files. Now similarly, what you could also do is show only directories. And to do that, we simply change the word files to dirs, just like this, and I'll press enter, and now we're seeing only directories. So I think these two options are fairly self-explanatory, but it might come in handy if you want to view only files or perhaps you want to view only directories. Now for another fun example, what I'm going to do is switch to another terminal. And what I'm going to do is connect to one of my development servers, which is going to be this one right here. Now press enter. I'll say yes. And this particular instance right here is a Raspberry Pi, as the name would suggest. And this is the server right here that I use to write code on. So if I go into my git directory, then admin, and I'm going to go into the configmajig folder. And this is a utility that I covered in a previous video. It's something that I've written myself. It's basically the solution that manages all automation across my systems. Servers, workstations, pretty much everything. I'll leave a card for a video that goes over this particular solution right here if you're curious about it. But the point is, what we have right here is a Git repository. And this leads right into the next example. What I'm going to do is just show the directory listing right here with EZA. You'll see some of the files that are included inside my repository. And we only have five files right here at the base level of the directory. But what I'm going to do right now is show you a really cool example. So I'm going to recall the previous command. And what I'm going to do is add the dash dash git option, just like that. Now in this case, we're able to see additional information about the repository. EZA is able to determine whether a file has been committed, whether it's been changed pending being committed, and things like that. Now I don't want to get into a complete tutorial about Git itself, but what I'm going to do is just show you an example of the repository changing. So I'll use the touch command to create a test file, just like that. And now I'll recall the previous command, as a dash L dash dash git. And we see the letter N next to test file. That's telling me that that's a brand new file. It's not a part of the repository. And if I want to include it into the repository, I have to commit it. Not all of you are going to be using Git, but if that's something that interests you, you could use the dash dash git option to view information as it pertains to the repository. So that way we can incorporate Git information or version control information into our directory listing. That's just awesome. Now, of course, there's other options that exist with the EZA command as well. But what I wanted to do was show you some of the highlights, and I've done that. And the thing is, EZA is available for free, so why not install it? If you want to take your ls command to the next level and make it more modern, well, that's what EZA was built for. So check it out if you're interested. And there you go. In this video, we checked out EZA, the modern replacement for ls, and I hope you enjoyed it. Now, EZA is one of many utilities that you can install on your Linux system. Definitely check out other videos on this channel for other Linux-related shenanigans that you can install. Anyway, I had a ton of fun making this video for you guys, and if you enjoyed it, then please click that like button to let YouTube know. Also, definitely subscribe to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux, and I'll see you in the next video.